We're in the TechCrunch studio today with Morgan Massen, head of talent at Foursquare and former technical recruiter at Google and at Twitter. Morgan, welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me, Sumil. So I think the burning question for a lot of people who are building tech companies or trying, you know, investing in tech companies and trying to build them is trying to find technical talent, right? We've heard this now for two months. You have a very unique perspective on this. Why is it so hard right now to find technical talent? It's hard right now. There are a lot of startups out there um, finding the very, very best engineers. However, um, it isn't, isn't much harder than it was. Um, it's a little bit easier to find them. Um, channels are larger, everything from GitHub to more H1Bs to more computer science grads. Um, but there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there, particularly first-time entrepreneurs, that haven't done it before and don't know how to assess technical talent and uh, are making a lot of mistakes along the way, but are um, are doing it for the first time and so, really struggling. So you're saying that the, the number of companies, obviously, that are being formed are increasing, but actually the pool of technical talent available to them because of immigration changes in immigration or now finding people through social coding platforms like GitHub, right, is is increasing the pool? You're able, not increasing the pool, visibility. Okay. So you're able to see them a little bit easier. I see. Yeah. OK. So the pool is staying the same, but you're able to get more data points on the people you're hiring, right? But that the people who are hiring, I just want to make sure I get this right, the people right. who are hiring haven't done this before. Right. So what are, what are the common, the, the people who are doing it right, what are they doing right that you're seeing? And the people who, uh, what are the common mistakes that you see? Yeah, yeah. Um, so those people are starting really early. Um, if you're an entrepreneur or going to be starting a company after what you're doing now, start making friends with entre or with engineers. Uh, don't network with entrepreneurs. Uh, there are or, um, investors, I should say. There are uh, ten angel investors for every engineer who's capable and interested in making the minimum viable product that you're dreaming about pitching. Um, companies that are really great uh, with recruiting have started very early on with the recruiting culture and also um, making a um, concerted effort to improve an engineering reputation, getting really involved in the community, things like um, having an engineering blog, um, open sourcing their projects, having an API and uh, providing documentation and support for it. Yeah. Um, those are really important. Um, and also, the company will take on the persona of the founders. We see this over and over again, and so start early and do that. Got it. And so for the companies that are struggling with this, or you know, what are the common mistakes that you're seeing? Is it that they're just not investing time with the right people, or how, how yeah, do you boil it down? Yeah, a big mistake is is hiring the best person you interviewed and not the best person out there possible. Um, you know, engineers will always impress you because they even the worst engineer will be able to do things that you're not able to do. And if you haven't had a lot of experience assessing technical talent, you may just not know, and you may hire someone that's not as great as you could have had and just not realized it. Hmm. Um, and that is a compounding effect because then they hire their friends or they hire um, you know, the level that they are able to interview at um, and you end up with not a, a superstar team. Got it. And so, and, and once somebody comes in, right, and so the, um, well actually let me rephrase that. How are the incentives changing now from when you were at Google and you were at Twitter and now at Foursquare? How are the incentives changing around recruiting mm -hmm. and then also when someone in keeping, keeping talent? Yeah. Or how are the incentive structures changing? I mean, now there's liquidity with second market. There's all these other things, mm -hmm. maybe getting more equity. What are you seeing uh, out there? Yeah, some new things like um, uh, these seed stage uh, startups are ending up with an exit of a talent acquisition or an aqua hire. Mm -hmm. That's an option for a lot of uh, these companies and a lot of investors like that, too. So with that um, comes a lot more savviness on part of the engineer to understand things like liquidation preferences, if they are to be acquired early instead of going public, things like that. Um, so being able to succeed there um, is to uh, network as closely as you can with, that, with engineers there. OK. And do you see the incentives continuing to change? Or do you think it's reached a point where you know, people are going to stay around companies between two and four years and kind of continue to move on? To keep, the incentives to keep engineers, um, for infrastructure engineers, um, give them something that's really hard to solve. Give them something that hasn't been solved before. Um, for other leaf node engineers, um, give them really a, a say in the product direction. Have your engineers drive the product roadmap. They're so ambitious, they'll be able to, to take that a long way. Um, it doesn't always need to come from product, especially if your product managers aren't that technical. Mm. Um, and then make a career path for them to become very solid, prominent in their field, individual contributors. Um, your very best engineers may not be so great at managing other engineers. They should be able to be paid more, earn more respect, um, and kind of climb up a technical ladder without having to go into, go into management is are things I'm seeing that engineers really want to stay for. OK. And I, I'd be curious to know like how you got into technology broadly, and yeah. then 
how you ended up at Google and starting to recruit, and then you were, you know, started working on, you know, special recruiting projects. So yeah. you walk us through like how you ended up in Silicon Valley. Yeah, I um, I started studying computer science at university and quickly realized that I was about a decade behind my mostly <laughs> male peers that had been. Um, and tearing apart their own computers and putting them back together and uh, putting video games on their TI-86s since childhood. Uh, so I decided to become a tech writer. I wanted to be able to communicate technology through words, if not through code. Um, and so I wanted to be a tech writer, not as a tech journalist, but an author of technical documentation. Mm -hmm. um, so I was interning at a startup, and I became, at the, around the same time, really involved with recruitment or rush in my sorority. And I completely fell in love with the ability to um, build an organization and improve an organization by strate strategically conveying enthusiasm for it. Um, so it just made so much sense for me to go into recruiting. Um, I came out to Silicon Valley. I realized once again I was behind a lot of peers that had networks from you know, family or Stanford. Uh, and so I started doing consulting mm -hmm. in order to be exposed to the most, most different um, types of companies as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when Google called me to go in-house. And then since then, I've been, um, with some exceptions of consulting and advising, I've been working right. in-house with companies. So now, when you were at Google, you're saying you're, you're brought in to do technical recruiting, but you yeah. ended up, your job ended up changing to do more kind of special target. Yeah, um, I've always had a passion for just the talent function and, um, you know, more that I, re recruiting can be so transactional and I think that's really too bad. And if you're looking at it strategically yeah. um, and through, you know, just different initiatives for, you know, what is really great for the business, it's a huge, really, so really let's, important So let's function. talk, that, that's a great topic. Why is, to, why is recruiting so transactional to, or what? Why is that? Yeah, um, I, I'm a subscriber to the cliche that recruiting is too important to be left to the recruiters. Um, it, a lot of the recruiters are, are contractors that um, are, are with a company for a short time, kind of just seasonal labor almost. Um, mm. And there is a lot of pressure to hit hiring targets. Uh, it becomes really transactional, especially with engineers, because uh, their skill sets can be really similar. They're, they're very different as people. Um, but when you're looking at hard skills um, and the same interview questions being asked over and over again on a whiteboard, um, it's hard not to group all those together step by step. Right. And, and now, like, w when you when a candidate comes in and you recruit him or her successfully, yeah. then what happens as well? Is it still transactional or do you see um, opportunities for companies to innovate around retention? Yeah, that's one thing that Foursquare is really doing. Um, we want, you, you are so close with a candidate when they accept the offer. Um, you know a lot about them, personal things, you've negotiated, you've had tough conversations. And it's, it's a loss if they join the company and you really only see them passing the halls or setting up an interview for them for another person. We want to keep those relationships, especially for recruiters that really are passionate about engineering and are very pro-engineer, um, and help them throughout their career, um, development, um, mm. figuring out what's next for them, um, and then keeping them with retention and things like that. So th this is a random idea that we've chatted about you know, a little bit here, but yeah. just theoretically, could could technical talent, web developers, designers be organized as you know pro athletes or entertainment people like IMG down in you know Los Angeles? Yeah. Is it, are there new models out there? New models that are going to be broken? Um, you know, given what's going on in consumer and mobile web. I haven't seen I haven't seen this model emerging too much. Um, there are a few different ways you can go there um, mm. that I really really am interested in. Um, first is so for engineers, they are negotiating compensation. We're talking about the people with the hardest skill, the best skill set, most in demand, can contribute the most for our for our economy but they don't have the negotiation skills or just don't understand equity. Um, these are things that are tough for anybody, especially for engineers that aren't you know, super savvy with um, finance or investment. It can be really, really difficult. So someone to help them through that. Um, negotiation for an offer, I mean, like anyone will say, it's the easiest you know, 20 grand or a tenth of a percent you'll ever make. Um, so that's something there that everyone can be doing better. Um, Engineers don't have, uh, you know, endorsement contracts and aren't, you know, being pulled in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. um, so because they may stay at a company for four years and be fully vested there, mm -hmm. negotiating that first offer is really important. Um, the other thing I'm seeing, I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is um, talent acquisitions are becoming more and more common. I would expect that to kind of take a new form of if a company needs to go somewhere really new with a product or they want to bring something in, um, a new technology, maybe a combination of the IP, but they know they're just going to need a team about five. Um, maybe 
facilitating those connections a little bit better um, through a merger rather than an acquisition. Um, I see this because there are so many seed stage startups, um, and I'm starting to get in my inbox. You know, I used to be one resume from an engineer interested in joining. Mm -hmm. Now it's a set of five yeah. saying this whole team would like to join. Your um, email inbox must be like a seismograph for activity. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could filter through coding ability in, yeah, the, in right. the inbox, yeah, for priority. Right, right. Absolutely. And so for going back to you personally, like since yeah. you've had you know, this very unique experience of seeing technical recruiting at some of the most important you know, technical companies here in the Valley, um, and are you ever thinking of going off and doing your own thing or maybe doing something disruptive in talent recruiting on your own? Have you ever thought about that? I have thought about that. I'm really happy at Foursquare where I am right now, um, but I think there is so much uh, to be done in the field of talent acquisition and recruiting and, and advocacy for technical professionals. Um, so that's something further down the road I would definitely look at, yeah. Great. Well, we'll be watching. Thanks for coming in, Morgan. Yeah, thanks so much, Samil.